No, it's wonderful to see you again. I know last time I got to talk to you at Netflix and I'd only got to see one episode. So now having seen all of them, I'm so excited for the ride everyone is about to go on. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. No, I I loved it. I can't wait for everyone to join in on the fun. Um, Going over to you, Steve, I just want to start us off a little bit. And can you just talk a little about the original material and just what you were most excited to bring to life from that? Uh, sure. I mean, I I started reading Neil's comic books, The Sandman, obviously, uh, when I was in high school, but also found Deadwood Detectives after it had sort of spun off and uh, kind of fell in love with the boys. I was going through a particular period of loss in my life and uh, it gave me like a sort of psychedelic shoulder to cry on in a weird way. Um, and so I just fell in love with the material. And so when I had the chance to adapt it, for me, it was really important to hang on to the backstory of the boys and sort of the backstory of Crystal and and kind of make sure that they felt familiar uh, to people who read the comics, even though we were having to age them up and change certain circumstances. Um, that really was the thing that I wanted to hang on to is sort of that we've chosen each other instead of death, mm -hmm. uh, which I feel is really special. Absolutely. And I love, I love all of their dynamics. I want to jump into that in a sec, but I did want to go to you, Beth, and just kind of talk about the supernatural elements that we get to explore in the show. Cause I know you've, you've each kind of worked on supernatural projects before, but I feel like this really gave you a platform where you could just go any direction a lot of ways. <laughs> You're literally speaking my words. This is what I say to everyone. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, no, you it's go. great. You go. <laughs> my brain. Um, no, it's exactly what you just said. I worked on a lot of different um, genre shows, but this is the the largest world building, and also in terms of the most creative, we're able to do kind of whatever we want, as you see in the um, season, in terms of who our cases are. You know, we go from. Um, you know, to high school boys who are trying to figure out who killed them, to a sea monster, you know, like giant every mushroom. giant mushroom. Every episode is is just wacky and, and to animated sequences that we love. And I feel like we were allowed in the writer's room, like the first couple of weeks, we kind of do this thing where we tell them to think of their craziest ideas and we put them all on the board and we use absolutely every single <laughs> one of them for the show. I I love that. So it's all just original, whatever you can really think of, the craziest ideas. So that's, yeah. that's so fun. And I have to ask, I mean, do you have a favorite kind of supernatural element that we will see this season? Um, a favorite super, uh, teeth face. <laughs> <laughs> that's from her episode. That's from her episode. Teeth face because it's we find him hilarious. He was just a running joke in the room. He was, but can I tell you though, like inside, inside baseball here <laughs> in the writer's room, we had never talked about teeth face speaking. And so when Beth's script mm -hmm. came in and it included teeth faces line, like, uh, Oh, sorry. sorry. Bye bye. Or whatever. <laughs> I was like, are you, fucking, are you kidding me? And so, uh, it was, and we kept it cause it was bananas. Mm -hmm. Um, I think for me, it's, it's, Maybe my favorite supernatural element is the Cat King, generally, mm -hmm. um, and then specifically the sprites. Absolutely. I was going to say, those are obviously some of my favorites, some some like characters that we get to, to, to learn more about, which is fun. Um, and I do have to ask, I mean, with Lucas Cage and the Cat King, is that just all him? Did he need any direction or is he just like, <laughs> I know, I know what this guy is about. He, we had, we had a zoom with him and, and he talked to us, uh, this was right when he took the role. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when he came in for his costume fitting, I think that was very informative mm -hmm. for him because Kelly, our costume designer had like gone to the mat on these very kind of, um, uh, sexually fluid, but still really regal outfits for him throughout. And so I think he really kind of pieced it together from that. And he showed up on set and kind of delivered that character. I mean, we were very, we're very grateful. I think because he's obviously so different from Edwin, I think he kind of used that energy for, you know, shock value to kind of mess with that character. And Oh yeah, he's having fun. Yeah. <laughs> How 
how can you not, honestly? <laughs> and I mean, I love, I love the core for the Nico, Crystal, Edwin, Charles. I mean, they're such an unlikely pairing, but you really get to watch them grow. And I also just love how relatable all of their perspectives can be to multiple people. I mean, even with the queer stories, there's queer relationships that kind of just flow and are not introduced. And then there's other ones, you know, like Edwin's that kind of take a little more time. So um, going over to you, Steve, again, can you just kind of talk a little bit about their, their all of their dynamic and what you love about it? Sure. I mean, look, we the great thing about the show is that, and this is true of all of Neil's work, so you can kind of take it out for a spin, which is that it it is it has so much representation built into it. But for me, I thought a fun sort of new discovery was Edwin's sexuality and his journey across the episode and discovering his identity because he died in Edwardian London when it wasn't even an option to be gay as we think of it today. Uh, and especially for him in boarding school. Uh, and so I just think that getting to go on the journey with him of self-discovery that he has over the first uh, season um, was really a highlight for me. And then if we're going to have, uh, like my rule is heroes can be gay and so can villains. So I'm not super worried about um, a queer people uh, being being presented in a negative light in a show that kind of has queer people across the board. So the Jenny Maxine story is um, one of our favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what I'll say. And people can watch the episode and see how that unfolds. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think we've kind of touched a lot about um, the fun of this show, the whimsy and everything, but it's also just really dark. Like I think episode three is what <laughs> turned me in that I was like, oh, like we're actually, we're going. <laughs> That's what like, it's supposed yes, to do. Yeah. Episode three is so, supposed to let you know. Yeah. So I just wanted to go to you, Beth, and just kind of talk about, so you said that was intentional, but did you ever really have these conversations on how dark it should be while still kind of keeping all of the supernatural whimsy? We did. Um, and we, and that's how we broke the episodes. But I, I do remember being, seeing a cut of three for the very first time and being like, whoa, <laughs> this is and there, it was even darker actually yeah. um but i think the that's the fun of the show in terms of the tone where you can you can have these like lighter moments while you have you know someone murdering his entire family over and over again um and i think that's what makes this show special because it you don't really see that kind of blend um in in a lot of shows and it and it didn't feel it didn't feel hard it wasn't like a it just kind of kind of naturally flowed, I feel like. Yeah, and we we use the humor in the show to tell even darker stories. So if we're kind of letting the audience off the hook with some jokes, and then there's some things that you can't really look away from. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed all of it. I think it really, really came together and was was beautifully dark and, and scary, but also just so fun to watch. So congratulations. That's all the time I have. But thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad we got to talk to you again. I, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.